Hey guys, welcome back. I don't know if you guys had any time between listening to this or not, but we're continuing off where we left off last time. All right, unit one, which is kinematics. So kinematics is basically a descriptive study of how things move. And so some of the first things that we want to focus on is position, velocity, and acceleration. All right, let's talk about the big five, the BFs. On the test, uh, this is the equation sheet that's going to be in front of every test that you have for physics. If you see here, you guys are going to see it, but there's the first three equations uh, are for kinematic. There's a few equations that you like basically need to memorize because if you don't memorize, you're going to get confused and it's going to take longer. Uh, there's a few ones that you need to memorize first. I'm not going to go by order from what my textbook says, but... I'll include them. The first one is v squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2a and then displacement. Um, that's if there's no t, so there's no time inside. The order doesn't matter. It's just the five equations that you need to know to essentially solve for the different variables that are used in like kinematic problems. So like the different things that you usually have is displacement, which is basically either delta x or delta y. You have velocity, you can you have either initial velocity or final velocity, depending on the question type. You have acceleration and you have time. These are the four different uh, variables that you're going to use in these five equations. So right. like Shadow said, this is the first, well, uh, well, it doesn't matter the order, but this is the first equation, which is final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity plus two times acceleration times delta x. So this equation, you can, be, you can use it if you are not given the time. Right, noting this is the third one on the sheet. It's the third equation, so it's listed. There's only two of them that are not listed on. And those two, basically, you need to memorize. So yeah, I mean, you need to memorize all of them, but <laughs> memorize those two first. Like if you understand like the concepts between like how each variable is related, it, it helps you a lot in like just knowing which one to use. Okay, moving on. So another equation that we have is x is equal to x initial plus velocity times time minus one half acceleration times t time squared. I've never used that equation. So delta x equals vt minus one half at squared. vt minus one half. So this one's without the initial velocity the other ones without the final velocity. So without the final velocity, one looks very similar. It's delta x equals v initial t plus one half at squared. So it's almost identical. The difference is a plus and a negative, the plus and a negative. And the other difference is um, the initial velocity and the velocity. Yeah. Personally, I've right. never had to use the one to find like the one without the initial velocity, but you know, yeah, it might show I haven't up. had to use that, but yeah, sometimes they don't give initial velocity. So another one that we have is velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. This is a very common one to use if you're not like given the displacement right. of the object. And the last one that we have is without the acceleration, which is the change in displacement is equal to velocity times time. And that velocity is, it's the final velocity minus the initial law times time. But yeah, these are the big five equations that you really do need to memorize because they're really important for like a lot of these things and later on also. And like, that's how like we use, what we use to like solve for many of the different types of questions that right, we'll right. see later on. All right, so speed is basically it's the ratio of like your total distance traveled divided by like the time that it like took to get there. It doesn't have direction, so it's a scalar. Um, you don't need like a negative or like a positive sign to like denote that. With velocity, it's basically speed with direction. So you can like technically most of the time, if you travel to the right, that's positive velocity, and then if you go to the left, that's an object with like negative velocity. And then your acceleration is basically change in velocity over time. So see, there's a pattern here anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this 
this first set of graphs, we'll just call them set of graphs one. So this is an object at rest because its position, or x, it isn't moving, you know. So if the object isn't moving, since velocity is change in position over time, your velocity would be zero because you're not moving at all. Right. All right. So when you do start moving, and here you're moving at a constant pace, as you can see with a linear line, your velocity would be constant, but it wouldn't be changing. So here you see the linear line. So you're constantly increasing your position. So because you're just increasing your position at a constant rate, your velocity would stay the same, but now it wouldn't be zero. It would have a value to it. So let's say you have a velocity of five. Yeah. So basically, if you're given like a set of graphs, you're going to have to like be able to like change in between them because like it's one thing to like know equations, but like you have to understand this conceptually. So like what I would recommend is just do like a bunch of practice problems where you're like switching from the um, velocity versus time graphs to like position versus time graphs or like acceleration versus time graphs. All right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. velocity is just a slope of the position versus time graph. Yeah. And an acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. Whoa, it's all related. Yeah, it's all related. All right. So over here in graph set three, your position is changing, but now you're going downwards. Whoa. So naturally, your velocity is negative now because the slope of your line is now negative. Then Whoa. over. <laughs> all right. So down here in graph set number four, here. Your line is increasing towards t equals zero, so your velocity is positive. So even though you're like down here in like the negative x's or like whatever you want to call them, your velocity is still up here in the positive. So don't get that mixed yeah. up. Yeah, because the slope is still increasing. Yeah, audio people, you might need to look at the notes just for clarification because this has a lot of like picture stuff that you have to do. You know, you can't really only have text so make sure you read the notes carefully in this section because yeah, yeah it's better for science podcast to just watch the video instead of listening to it okay well just one more thing to add on if the speed is increasing i'm just going to draw on the first graph if it's going like this then the velocity yeah. is also increasing like this if your position versus time looks like that your velocity is going to look like that. So here, where Ding just drew the yellow line up here, you're right. curving upwards. So your velocity will, be, will have like a slope that goes up. It looks like um, exponential growth. And then the, the second one that Dove drew, it's a log sloping graph. And the velocity versus time is decreasing linear. Anyways, free fall problem. A stone is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. Assuming there's no air resistance, because we're definitely not on Earth, how long would it take for the stone to strike the water 80 meters below the bridge? So first thing you guys need to know, um, on a physics exam, you can use negative 10 as gravity, or 10, depends on what you define 10 as. So first thing we need to do is solve for the time. So how long does it take to hit the bottom? So for this one, actually, to be fairly honest and not difficult, uh, it's eight seconds. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who want us to do it piece by piece, it's 10 for the gravity. And oh, we should probably use the equations. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to use distance is equal to acceleration times time. Okay, but like one thing you have to understand here is that your initial velocity in the horizontal direction is going to be the same when you get all the way down here. Right. Because like right. your initial so and your final. So technically, you could use the one that's like, yeah. Yeah, it's two. You need to separate it. Make sure to. Yeah. Distance in the y direction is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration time. Remember, if it's going 10 meters per second, the initial in the y direction is zero. Because you're not throwing the rock. Because you're not. You yeah, you're not yeah. throwing it downwards. Yeah. You're only throwing. When we get to throwing rocks downwards, that's kind of the ramp stuff in the next unit. So yeah. So for me personally, I don't do negatives. I just do um eighty equals uh since there's zero, we don't need to do that. Uh, ten t. So let's say um that we know it's t equals eight seconds. This question is asking how far will the rock land? So we basically just used 10 times 8. So it's going to land 80 feet away. All right, let's do one with angles. And by the way, you guys don't know 
because the audio editors cut this out. But uh, we're going to do a separate podcast that specifically is for more practice problems. And we're going to do free response there. So make sure you check those pra extra practice problems out. A soccer ball. I rest on the ground. That's like a black hole. But a soccer ball, <laughs> just kidding. Rest on the ground. Die. <laughs> is kicked with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. And at a launch angle of 30 degrees, calculate the total flight time, assuming there is no air resistance because physics hate air resistance. Just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> let's go to page six, was it? All right, so on page six, all right, let's look at the different equations that we need to use. So um, we don't have displacement, so that eliminates basically one, three, four, and five. So we're definitely using the second equation. Um, as you can see in this beautiful cat over here, uh, it's time to nap. All right, um, so final velocity equals initial plus AT. So going back to the grid, so let me use a laser pointer. So you know a ball is going to do this, right? Because it's uh, projectile motion. So we're going to we're gonna we're going to try to find it while it's in the center uh, or its apex. So the peak. Uh, so when the ball reaches its peak, it's going to like stop. Um, velocity final is going to equal to zero. Well, in the y direction. The first thing we need to do is we need to uh, separate this velocity vector into its x and y components. Okay, so the velocity in the y direction is 5. So we need to use SOHCAHTOA. So if you don't know SOHCAHTOA, then too bad. Um, but uh, <laughs> SOHCAHTOA uh, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So like what whoever drew over here bring over the h and uh, hypotenuse times sine of the angle would be equal to opposite. In this case, since we're measuring this angle, this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. Um, if you don't know SOHCAHTOA, I suggest you search up videos on that because physics does a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is five, right? I don't think we need to know what this is because it didn't ask how far away it went. Can someone write the formula down from previous? Okay. Velocity minus velocity initial divided by A equals T. We know this point equals to zero. So uh, final velocity would equal to zero. We're going to put zero minus initial, which is five. Remember, we're solving for the Y. So I, I kind of should add like Y, but you get the idea. Divided by the acceleration. What's the... <laughs> It's gravity, man. It's gravity. <laughs> Let's use 10, negative 10, because you can do that for the AP exam. So negative 5 divided by negative 10. Why is this so crowded? Why can't we have space? <laughs> okay, all right. Can we move things? I doubt it. Okay, well, that works too. Why are we doing it like this? <laughs> I don't know. This is so messy. <laughs> all right, one half, right? We know it takes 0 0.5 seconds to reach this point. Um, since it's the apex, it's the middle. So it's half of the total time, right? Um, but it took half a second. So think of it more like if it from this point to this point is T, right? Um, so that means from this point to this point to this point would be T times 2, 2T. Two I I wouldn't say it as two t. <sighs> why was why do you not say it's two t? T and one half t. If you because two t. t if you say two t, that's t. like that's like saying double the time. But... It is double the time, dove. No, I mean like okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not. That's not what I was trying to get at. Then what are you trying to get? At? Okay. The total time should be t. Yeah, okay. Total all right. Time all right. Is t. Okay, but that just makes. Um, solving complicated. Let me show you why. Because if you have, if you know one half it equals t, it doesn't matter. No, it does. Watch, watch, <laughs> watch, watch, watch. If you know one half no, equals you t, you can just turn it. I two t <laughs> would equal to one half <laughs> times two, right? So that would equal you to one. You don't have to do this. I... You don't have to do this I... if you just know your total time is just going to be Double. multiplied. 
double, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you just already know oh what you God. need to do with your answer. Okay. All right. Okay, Duff. Um, that bothers me. That spec bothers me. Okay. All right. It's gone. <laughs> I. <laughs> okay. Erase it. Um, but yeah, like what Duff said. So as long as you know what you're doing, you're fine. If you don't know what you're doing, that's a problem. Check out our notes if you don't know what you're doing. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us if you're on Spotify. Make sure you share to your friends. Make sure you study. Check out our website. Make sure you read the notes because those help. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.